Hello everybody and welcome to Virtual Church and welcome to Holy Trinity Church here in Winchester. This is a very special virtual church today, not least because we are in this spectacular uh, Anglo-Catholic uh, church, but actually we've been uh, given very privileged access to Viscount's top-of-the-range electronic organ. And I chose this organ to demonstrate and feature this instrument because churches like this up and down the country don't have a pipe organ. There's no pipe organ here. They have a Copeman Hart electronic organ. It's rather old. And perhaps churches like this with an old electric organ might be considering at some point upgrading to a more modern and up-to-date instrument. Buying a pipe organ might not be feasible because of the, the, the upfront cost uh, and also the ongoing cost. It certainly adds up to a heck of a lot of money. An electric organ like this would be a, a viable alternative. So perhaps the Viscount, this uh, Regent 469D, could be uh, Holy Trinity's replacement. Well, today in Virtual Church, we're going to put it through its paces. We're going to hear all of the colors. We're going to explore all of the stops. We're also going to find out the, um, the quirks, the positives and the negatives about it. We're going to have 12 hymns and four organ pieces. We're going to end with Marcel Dupre's Cortege et Litanie. And we're going to start with um, Tell Out My Soul, The Greatness of the Lord to the wonderful tune Woodlands. Uh, as requested by Anne and Maffitt. I really hope you enjoy today's virtual church from Holy Trinity, Winchester, and I really hope you enjoy getting to know this wonderful cathedral-style um, electronic organ. Well, hello, and welcome to the organ loft of this wonderful um, Viscount organ. You know, I feel very at home in sitting here because this is uh, quite simply a modern and later and slightly better version of the organ that we have 
back at home. Of course, I only have three manuals. This has four and a lot more stops. So today we're going to be exploring this organ, exploring the colors, uh, exploring what it can do, just my general observations on it, the way it feels, the way it looks, even the way it smells, it smells good. We've got a number of hymns as usual and a number of organ pieces. All of these hymns have been requested by our very good patrons, so I'm very, very grateful indeed. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord and numbered blessings, give my spirit voice. As you all know, this is a paraphrase of the Magnificat, a wonderful words here by Timothy Dudley Smith. Uh, requested by Anne and Maffitt. So thank you very much, guys, for requesting um, such a terrific opener. Let's stick in um, NEH and go on to our next hymn, which is A Worship the Lord in the Beauty of Holiness. This is the one where you have the upbeat uh, in verses one and in verse five. Interestingly, verse five, the words are exactly the same as verse one, it's a repeat. I like that. I like the way it sort of brings you back home just to uh, sing the words once again to make them even more familiar. Well, this organ has a tuba moralibus, um, just like we do at York, actually. So I, I, it takes me back to my York days and also a tuba down on the choir. You heard both of those in the first hymn. Um, and I, but I will now, I will use the choir tuba for verse one, accompanied by uh, some of the, uh, the chorus on the swell and great. So I worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, a request from Julian.
There's a reason why I'm sat at this organ in this particular church. This is the Church of Holy Trinity in uh, Winchester. And um, this church doesn't actually have a pipe organ. It does have a rather old electronic organ over on the south side in front of me. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to, uh, for me to uh, talk about um, these sorts of churches that possibly can't afford uh, a pipe organ, um, certainly can't afford the ongoing costs of a pipe organ either, and, and where something like this might be useful. Certainly Holy Trinity in Winchester have already um, invested in an electronic organ, but electronic organs, just as pipe organs, uh, do wear out, technology improves, and therefore we can get better things um, in, in due course. So Holy Trinity Winchester might be in the market someday for a new organ. This Viscount organ, this is a Regent uh, 469D. I hope that's right, my dyslexia gets my numbers jumbled up. I'll put it on the screen if it's correct or not. <laughs> um, this is Viscount's top of the range organ and it really does feel uh, like the top of the range organ. It feels very much like sitting at a um, one of our great cathedral organs. The stops are pretty much where you'd expect them to be, although I'll get more into that later on. And the keys feel very nice to press. The next hymn is O oh God Our Help in Ages Past. It's called, the tune is called St Anne, you all know that. I'm going to follow on from this hymn straight into um, the wonderful Bach fugue, uh, which is uh, now nicknamed the St Anne because of its similarity between it and this uh, hymn tune. So this tune is by William Croft. I don't think um, J.S. Bach ever met William Croft. There's no evidence um, he might have done. Um, six verses, it's a request from David Hart. And then, like I say, we'll go straight into um, J.S. Bach's fugue.
have to say that that does really sound very exciting in here and um, the clarity um, of this organ really encourages <coughs> excuse me um, really encourages uh, precise playing often organs of this size um, that you might uh, you might find in some of our churches and uh, larger cathedrals in this country organs of this size might just be a little bit sloppy and slow um, people who play them regularly um, in the in the audience will know exactly what I mean but actually this has a very clear um, sense of Im Im immediacy about it and the mixtures are very clear and actually that really helps for such intricate music like this. One thing I'm just finding a little bit disconcerting, um, I mean um, this is a, a completely honest, um, it's not a review but um, an, an honest experience of this organ is the divisions of the stops are not entirely clear Okay, so towards the top of the pedal uh, stops, there are two rows. So those are pedal, 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 pedal. And then it goes to three there. So pedal, 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 pedal. And the swell sort of goes up there and across there like that. It's not very clear, if I'm honest. And it's the same on this side as well. Something that you would, you would have to get used to um, whilst uh, playing the organ. But that's, that's quite a small niggle, isn't it? Oh, wow, what a wonderful piece that is. Um, okay, where are we going to go to next? We're going to go into ancient and modern. Uh, I will sing the wondrous st uh, story. Um, <clears throat> this is a request from David Fletcher. It's number 723 in here. Oh, yes, there it is. Oh, actually, the words are different. So uh, the words are different. So I'm going to play the tune as requested, um, but the words are different. I'll play the tune three times, David. I hope you don't mind. I um, hope that's enough for you to get your um, your singing in uh, squished into that. So this one looks like it's going to be a, a quiet one. So we need a good opportunity actually to now explore some of these quieter stops. So why don't we have some of the uh, the mutations down on the choir? Um, and also on the on the great as well. Uh, let, let's start with the the twelfth on the uh, on the great. So this is um, either loved with uh, everlasting love, or I will sing the wondrous story. Either way, it has been requested by David Fletcher.
I have to say that if this was my church and this is the organ to which I had access, I would be very happy with this. You know, it has lots of colours, that, that grand cornet on the grate. It's a really quite beautiful stop, actually. And it has the um, beautiful flutes down on the choir. Strings, lots of pedal stops. It's, it's actually a really nice piece of furniture. I'm not, su I'm not saying that I'm surprised, but there's an element of relief, I suppose, sitting at an organ like this. Um, the Regent, as I said earlier, it's top of the range in the Viscount um, catalogue of organs. And it costs, uh, as this video is uh, published, it costs, according to the website, £56,000. That's quite a lot of money, really. That's, that's, that's more than um, a Jaguar I-Pace. <laughs> I'd say Jaguar I-Pace because that's an electric car. This is an electric organ, which costs more than a Jaguar I-Pace. Now, that, that, that actually just brings me on to the whole, um, you know, organs, electrics versus pipe organs. There's an argument in the organ world um, which goes along the lines of if it hasn't got pipes then I refuse to play it because by definition it isn't very good and it is not authentic. Well then I'm sorry to the people who say that. I disagree with you. New and electric cars aren't necessarily a bad thing, are they? Tesla are getting uh, much, uh, much better with every car they release. I must admit I lust after one of those um, there's an X space, the ones with the, the doors which open like a Lamborghini. Um, Porsche Taycan, which is a beautiful electric car, had, some, had excellent reviews. And as I just mentioned, the Jaguar I-Pace, which is a beautiful uh, looking car. None of those cars have engines, but yet they're really beautiful. These electric organs don't have pipes but they, they can still be really beautiful. And, and I'm getting that impression uh, from this organ, indeed. It, it just, well, I, I'm not going to waffle on for too much longer, but I think you're, you're getting, I hope you're getting the impression that I'm actually rather enjoying myself. <laughs> so where are we gonna go to next? Um, NEH 474. Ooh, wow, I've had this one for a long time. Yes. Um, who is this so weak and helpless? Um, the tune is called Ebenezer. E Ebenezer. E I think it's Ebenezer. Actually, that's how, that's how you pronounce those vowels. Uh, <laughs> you know how I'm useless at pronouncing um, him names. Oh. Um, the words are by W. Um, Walsham Howe. And the music is from an anthem by Thomas Williams. I don't know this anthem. Um, obviously an English composer. And it's being requested by Jeff. So Jeff, four verses of this um, wonderful hymn.
I don't know whether you noticed in that one, I was having to pull out some stops more than once. Another niggle, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to um, provide feedback and niggles about these um, organs. This is an honest, an honest experience, as, as I say. I don't know whether, just let me, let me switch to this camera. Let me just pull out um, some, they work fine. Okay, but I push them in. See, the stops aren't entirely responsive. On this side, the mixture, which one was it? That one, the sharp mixture. You have to pull the stop out all of the way for it to engage. If you pull it out, it's just a little bit like that. It doesn't engage. And I think that's, I would need to get used to that. I would, the problem is you put, if, you, if you get a good grip of it and pull it, is there not a danger of it eventually breaking and pulling it out of its socket? Don't know. Anyway, it's just an, an, an observation. Um, right, where are we going to next? Oh, a very uplifting one. Ancient and modern, how great thou art. A request from Ruthie. Thank you very much, Ruthie. I put a, a, a post on Patreon last night, so that was Tuesday night, um, saying, um, asking for requests for this recording. And they were very keen to get their requests in, so they came in very, very quickly. And actually, we, be, we became very quickly oversubscribed um, with requests. So we're going to have to push um, some, well, actually, this is going out in a couple of weeks' time. So we'll actually have the requests, this is confusing, that I'm not playing today in the past. Ah, oh, it's just confusing, isn't it? Anyway, <laughs> how great thou art, um, when I in awesome wonder consider all of the works thy hand hath made. Um, this is a request, as I say, from Ruthie. So four verses plus a refrain.
Did you see what I mean? Um, the 32 foot contrabombard refused to come out to play. So we're going to go into our second organ piece now. Um, it's a, a piece by a chap, an American composer, which uh, called Gordon Young, and it's called Prelude in Classic Style. I must admit this piece is not well known here in England, um, but I'm led to believe it is rather popular in over in the States. So I will play it for you. Um, somebody mentioned it on the um, Beauty and Sound Organists Association only just a few days ago and, um, and actually requested that I play it. So I am going to play it. It's here. I haven't practiced it. I haven't played it since last time I played it, which was over a year ago now. What does he ask for? Yes, for full swell. I'll press swell six. Uh, great foundations and mixture. Let's press uh, <laughs> great six. Take off the, um, the reeds and on the pedal as well. Let's just uh, calm that down a little bit. Okay. Um, and that's it, 16 foot as well. Okay, well I can do that. Let, let's get some couplers. So, <laughs> let's see what happens. This is um, it's called Prelude in Classic Style by Gordon Young. And it actually was requested by Scott. If you're watching Scott, this is for you. Well, that was the prelude in classic style there as requested um, rather by accident by Scott Davis, who mentioned it over in the BISOA um, earlier in the week. So I hope that was okay. And I'm, managed, I'm glad that I managed to get through that relatively unscathed. I'm amazed really. I've not played that in over a year. It's rather fun, <laughs> rather fun. Right, Paul Larson wants me to play All Creatures of Our God and King. Well, I'm very, very happy to play that. Um, it has actually been requested by Paul uh, for St. Francis uh, Day. So it's number 263. Paul uh, is a fan of cats and um, has had a number of feline creatures 
himself, just like um, we do at home. Um, but unfortunately, um, Paul has lost uh, some of his very friends. And that's devastating when that happens. Uh, I know that because I've, I've lost a number of cats and they do become part of the family, just like dogs. Um, and when you, when you lose one, it's devastating. So Paul, my heart is uh, with you. It goes out to you um, and I will happily play this for you. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing, Alleluia, Alleluia. We won't have all seven verses, if you don't mind, Paul. We'll have five verses. Uh, so we'll omit, I don't know which hymn book you're using, if any, uh, but we'll omit verses five and six. So that's one, two, three, four, and seven. Okay, so this is a great hymn, a great hymn. I'm going to start it on the big tuba muralibus up on the solo division, couple accompanied by most other stuff, basically. <laughs> Here we go, Paul.
very, very happy to be playing this organ. I just, I'm not just saying that because uh, Viscount have made me say it, so they're not holding me hostage at all. Um, I'm really, really enjoying this organ a lot. Now, let's go into um, a request from Jerry Martin, um, a member of our community who has been in the community for a considerable time. Uh, um, one of the staple members, if you, if you like. And the problem is with this one, it's on a bit of a weird uh, photo on the iPad, so I have to scroll up and down. Uh, so Jerry, I hope we get it right. Oh no, the words are all in Gaelic. <laughs> what a shame, I can't read that. Now, the, the, the title is Christ the Seed. I'm afraid that's as far as I'm going to get <laughs> with it. I think you choose these hymns on purpose because you know I can't pronounce them. Beautiful uh, hymn book though, this is from the, the Veritas hymnal. What should we use for this then? Let's use, I'll tell you what we haven't heard yet. We haven't heard um, the, the choir core anglais. Let's, let's use that, accompanied by the, um, the quiet swell flutes, a bit of pedal, of course. Let's see how we get on with that. So the core anglais is at 16 foot, and I'll start it um, at, at pitch, and then if I decide to, I might go up the octave to make it an eight foot. So, uh, <laughs> Christ is the seed. I don't know the seed of what? Life, I guess. <laughs>
beautiful stuff, Jerry. I've never seen um, a hymn before where there are where there is a um, a group of uh, demi semi quavers. <laughs> so obviously it's like one of those sort of a, uh, the equivalent of a Scottish snap. I'm not sure what this would be called. Now the wonderful thing about this organ is. Everything, you know, you, know, you know, like in Hauptwerk, well, some of you won't, but you can, in Hauptwerk, adjust every single note on every single uh, rank. You can turn the volume up, you can turn it down, you can adjust the EQ, you can just do all sorts with it. You can do similar things to this. Now, this also has a, a software technology called Physis, and that, and that basically is the emulation of the way a pipe, the air flows through a pipe, right? So the, the software can manipulate the sound in, in over 20 different ways from the, the air going into the pipe. Um, and the, the software can just emulate that the sound sort of filling up with air. And you can also do all sorts. You can turn, turn uh, stops up and down. You can adjust the tuning. You can do all sorts. It's really, really incredible stuff indeed. Um, and you know, if if there is a stop which stands out, which which this one does, the four-part principle does to me a little bit. I I could easily go into the, the settings if I knew how to. <laughs> I'm not going to, um, and just adjust it, turn it down, turn it up. Maybe adjust the um, the tone of it as well. But I mean, everything else is balancing nicely. The, the pedal reeds are coming through with, um, with clarity and, and excitement and gravitas. The tuba moralibus is exciting. The, the full swell sound is very good. Um, yeah, all, all, all in all, so far, so good. I would like to see, um, you know, a, on an organ this size, it, it's, it's common for there to be eight divisionals on this swell and the great just allows a little bit more freedom when getting up into the mixtures and the reeds. Um, six divisionals on the choir and the solo is, is by and large um, acceptable. So let's go on to our next hymn, shall we? A very beautiful one um, by, it's the Passion Choral by, um, well, it's not by J.S. Park at all, but J.S. Park used, used it in his various, in his Matthew Passion. Um, and he has harmonized it here. O oh, sacred head, sore wounded. This is a request from uh, Jason, and I'm very happy to play this because it is oh so beautiful indeed, and very poignant as well. What on earth shall we have in terms of solo stops? We haven't yet heard um, the orchestral oboe on the solo division. Do you think we ought to hear a bit of that one? We've got a clarinet on the choir, which we, we have heard. So we'll, we'll start with the clarinet on the choir and then we'll actually make our way up to the solo at some point.
Really beautiful music indeed, that one. Whilst we're in that sort of uh, slow, reflective mood, a couple of uh, weeks ago, I put on a uh, recording of me playing the Chant Donnay by uh, Maurice Duruflet. Um, and it's, 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 it is known by some people, but it's not as well known as it ought to be and it deserves to be better known. And I've offered to send um, people a PDF version of it. More on that uh, soon. I lost my copy and I've had to re retype it out. I'm going to play it. It's very, very short. Um, it's very short indeed. And actually, I, I made my transcription uh, of uh, this piece from Drouflet's own um, score. So he actually it's in a volume of 60 or so pieces of very short music to Jean Gallon, um, de Rufle's harmony teacher. And it's written out in four uh, staves, not for any specific instrument, it's just written out in four staves. And I've used that version along with the tempo marking and all of the uh, dynamics and phrase markings. However, I am just going to change the tempo marking he specifically said in, uh, said in his uh, score that it's moderato crotchet equals 76. I'm going to play it slower than that. I'm telling you that in case you think I'm, I've, I've, I've gone mad. I'm just, I'm just telling you I'm going to play it slower than crotchet equals 76. I like to start this on um, the strings, basically. Uh, so let, let's pull together the solo and swell strings. We'll wait for that siren to go before we start. Um, I like to have a little bit of a, um, a, a reed solo. So let's have the clarinet on the choir, and then we'll also have a, a diapason y, a fluty solo. So, what should we do for that? Let's, let's combine the clarabelle flute and the dulciana on the grate. That might give us a nice, sort of a soft diapason sound. Okay, so Chant Donné by Maurice Duflé.
a really beautiful miniature. Very, very nice indeed. Um, and actually, the stringy sounds, the, the effect in this church, I don't know what they'll come through uh, like on the microphones, but I'll, I'll try to, when I get home in the studio, uh, balance it. I've got some microphones behind me here um, and, the, and some in front of me, which is where the speakers are, actually. In here, those strings sound really authentic, and um, I actually thought, uh, halfway through that, I genuinely thought this, I genuinely thought this, that I, do you know what? I could be playing a real pipe organ. They sound really nice in this building. So let's hope they sound as good uh, through your speakers as they do through these speakers. Right, so on, our, on to our final sort of um, um, act now, if you like, the, the fourth and final act. Uh, I need to go to a bit of paper here. Um, land, oh yes, yes, yes. <laughs> The Land of My Fathers. I'm glad Clara, Caroline's written that for me uh, because this is the Welsh National Anthem and unsurprisingly, it's in Welsh. Now, Matt, I don't speak Welsh, unfortunately. Neither do I speak Gaelic, Jerry. Uh, so um, all I know is <laughs> it's the Land of My Fathers and it is the Welsh National Anthem. How... Um, how shameful that I don't know the words to the Welsh national anthem, but I've never, I've never had to sing, uh, to sing it in my life. So the music is by a great name, James James. <laughs> I think that's his name, James James. Um, and I think the words are by Evan, Evan James. Um, what more is there to say? So here we go. Uh, this is the Welsh national anthem, and it's a request from Matt. Carolina assures me that whenever there's a rugby game, a Welsh rugby game, that national anthem is sung um, in a typically Welsh way, let's put it that way. And that is only a good thing. If you think of Welsh male voice choirs, what a sound they make. Um, so that's actually really a nice national anthem, isn't it? I really like um, playing, I don't know, you know, if we had a pub quiz and named the national anthem, I would only get maybe half a dozen. Um, and I wouldn't actually have gotten that one. So it's nice to have, um, nice to get to know it. And maybe I should do a, a, a compilation of all the national anthems of, around the world. How long would that take? How many are there? 
Okay, so dear Lord and Father of uh, of mankind. Ooh, now this is a um, this is one because this requires a huge crescendo in that final verse, doesn't it? So whilst I'm getting my hymn ready and thinking about the registration and the crescendo, uh, Story Angel is actually going to announce this hymn for us. So Story Angel, over to you. Hi, this is Story Angel, also known as the Other Caroline. I am in Houston, Texas and I would like to ask for Dear Lord and Father of Mankind to the tune of Repton. I particularly like the penultimate verse that says, Drop thy still dews of quietness till all our strivings cease. Take from our souls the strain and stress and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of thy peace. Now those words were written a couple of hundred years ago and I think sometimes we think that stress is a is a modern day issue but 200 years ago i wonder what people were facing back then that these prayers these words brought comfort to them and what they meant to my dad when he was given this hymn book this public school hymn book when he was evacuated in the second world war and he got to sing these words what did they mean to people then because i know that today these words mean a whole lot to me. They are a prayer that I pray often and it's hard for me to sing them without choking up. So I encourage you if this isn't a hymn that you know well or if it's one that you know well but have never really looked at the words, yes listen to the beautiful music but also pay attention to these words. This whole hymn is a prayer and I hope that we can all enjoy it and be blessed by it today.
Whew. So my thoughts during that um, one of the verses there was, why is there no solo to swell on the sw so, um, swell thumb? Um, oh, it's there. Why is it over there? It shouldn't be over there. It should be over on the left hand side. Uh, so I'm so used to um, organs having the couplers um, on the left hand side of the divisionals. It's quite common for them all to be over there, but on this organ, um, it's obviously a, a design thing, all of the um, solo to pedal, swell to pedal, great to pedal, choir to pedal are on the left down there, and then all the manual couplers, so, so swell to uh, great, swell to choir, are all over on the right. I should remember that from my organ at home because that's what it is at home. However, out in the real world, playing over at Winchester Cathedral, um, I'm pointing over there because it's over there, this, all of the couplers are, are over on the left. Um, I'd be interested to know why they're not like that on this organ. That, that might just take it to the next level of um, or, or authenticity, I think. Right, well, let's get the next hymn ready. Um, and actually, we'll go straight into um, the voluntary as well. So I will just announce the voluntary um, after the hymn, actually. So this is the first, the first thing before we get to the voluntary is praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation, number 440. This is a request from Justin. Where are we? 440, one more to go, there we go. Tune is called, as we all know, so Lobe den Herren, um, and there is a corker of a reharmonization in this uh, book by uh, Dear Noel, which I'm, I'm definitely going to play it. I love this one. Uh, so if I go to L, I'll find it for you. You've heard it before because it was the one we, uh, I used for the virtual choir video we did last year. Uh, so this really, this, this is a, you know, a full church, full cathedral, uh, full congregation type thing now. Uplifting him in a very bright and uplifting key. We'll have, um, ha well, we will have um, four verses of this, despite there being six in the hymn book. And we'll make the most of these very exciting stops. So here we go, Justin. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation full swell full great then you might want to turn your hi fis or your headphones down a little bit here we go
Well, that brings us to the end of um, the hymns. What a way to end with a bit of Noel Rawthorn there. Um, and that takes us into the uh, voluntary today, which is Marcel Dupre's um, Cortege et Litanie. Beautiful piece in two halves. Two, he, he uses two themes. Um, the, the opening theme is very clearly introduced um, going into the second section. And then towards the end of the piece, he then brings both of those themes together uh, to, uh, to really, really wonderful effect. Starts very quietly on the, uh, the strings. And actually, we're going to have a little bit of a, a very cheeky um, additional stop, which we can't do on a pipe organ. Um, wait and see what that is. Starts very quietly and gradually builds and builds and builds uh, to the end, like I say, where he brings the themes together. A wonderful piece is Cortege et Litanie by Marcel Dupre.
well, <laughs> what a piece. Very, very, um, oh, it, it, it's the first piece of Dupre that I learned. Um, it's one of the easiest, actually. Uh, but it's, it's really wonderful, really wonderful. And, and sounds terrific on this organ, uh, this Viscount organ, this, this, this more recent version of Viscount than mine. Uh, mine's from the 90s. This is only a few years old. It is a Regent 469D. I really hope you've enjoyed listening to this organ. I've really enjoyed playing it. Um, look out for a video in the coming days um, where I talk more about uh, my thoughts, about its uh, registration, its sounds, its quirks, positives and negatives. Um, and I'm very grateful to Viscounts for uh, allowing me to play this instrument. And I'm also uh, very grateful to Canon Phil Collins, a very good friend of mine, um, for allowing us, uh, us to use this glorious church here in Winchester. It is the, um, the Holy Trinity um, Church. It's a, uh, an Anglo-Catholic church and has always been so. Um, one of the few Anglo-Catholic churches in Winchester, actually. And it's a really wonderful space. It has that, that smell of incense in here. It's very, uh, very uncommon around this area, unfortunately. Ah, so, until um, next time, where I talk about the organ in a bit more detail, um, I will say a cheerio. Thank you, everyone, for requesting uh, these hymns. Um, it's been a great fun today. Thank you very much. Until next time. Cheerio. <laughs> Goodbye. Or Cortege et Litanie by Marcel Dupre. But before we get there, the first hymn is Tell Out My Soul, The King of Heaven, which is a request from a number of people. Uh, Anne and what's happened? Uh -huh. uh, but before we get there, let's have Tell Out My Soul. The glory. Uh. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's virtual church from the Church, the Holy Trinity Church, the Church of the Holy Trinity. Hmm. The Holy Trinity Church from Holy Trinity Church, which And I hope by the end of today's virtual church, you will be. What will you be? What will you be? <sighs> I ran out of words. What will you be?